All right, for today's cook, we are smoking cold chuck roast on the smoker. All right, look at this bad boy. So I found this. I've never actually smoked a chuck roast with bone in, but it was like $1.99 a pound, so I could not help myself. So we are going to smoke this like a brisket and see what we get. Look at that. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to use a brisket rub. I'm going to season this just like I would a brisket. Rub some olive oil on there so it'll stick better. Um, I did dry brand this overnight, so I covered it in salt, put it out in the uh, refrigerator, and now we're just adding some olive oil to the outside in the rub. And away we go. Let's fire up that grill. fire lit we're gonna let this stabilize we're sitting at about 230 degrees got the bottom vent open about half inch and the top vent open just a sliver and we're ready to go today I'm pretty excited we are cooking first cook on this old-school Kamado did a restoration on it and man it's holding temp really well uh, put it in about an hour ago and we're sitting at yep yeah, right around 2 30 which is exactly where I want it and it's just doing a great job pretty excited it looks cool I uh, had to custom make this ring because uh, this uh, this one was a little bit smaller around than the ones they're making nowadays by like a half inch which was really annoying and uh, I couldn't find couldn't find one that would actually fit so I got a Kamado Joe on had it cut in the back and shrunk and uh, yeah not bad all right but let's get to it today we're smoking a my father hopefully you can see that I love my father cigars they make such great cigars so, mm. and uh, we're drinking today, an old fashioned. I had some, uh, you ever get some scotch or bourbon that's just not that great as far as sipping on? Well, I had some scotch like that, and so I decided to make a smoked old fashioned where if you add scotch instead of bourbon, it's pretty damn good. So, that's what we're doing. I'm very picky about my old fashions. I hate that a lot of restaurants and bars don't know how to make them. They put in all the muddled fruit and crap. I mean, add a twist, maybe a cherry, one of those dark ones, but no freaking muddled fruit in it. Come on, man. Killing me. <laughs> Simba's over here catching flies. He's so funny. He's really good at it, actually. You see him jumping around like a spaz. That's what he's doing. So, chuck roast. Some people will call it the uh, poor man's brisket, um, but I'm going to tell you a little secret. Don't hate me. 
but I do not like brisket. I <laughs> it has been like if I ever go to a, a barbecue joint or a friend's house and they have brisket, it is the one thing I want to put on my plate. And I know guys love it. People love it. I don't know why. I've had really good brisket from professional barbecuers. I mean, championship brisket. And I just don't... I don't know. I don't know why. Um, I've cooked it a few times, and it's turned out really good. But it's like, it's that temporary. It's so temporary. It dries up so freaking fast. And even when it's juicy, it feels like as you're eating it, it wants to just dry up so bad. Like, I don't know. So I'm hoping that this will turn out and be my new brisket because it's got a lot more fat in it. Um, but we'll see. But I'm really, I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. So, anyway, uh, super excited about this brisket. Yeah, see, <laughs> this brisket, it's not a brisket, but I'm sure gonna cook it like one. So, pretty excited about it, and uh, looking forward to uh, dinner later. All right, guys, be cool, smoke on, and thanks for watching. See you guys in a few hours. Cheers. Is finally done uh, this was quite the uh, adventure but I'll tell you about about that later but look at this thing just tender this bone just pulls right out and uh, it's juicy it's got a nice bark on it Man, I can't wait to taste this Hey guys, so have I got a story for you. One, it turned out really good. Um, originally I was thinking brisket, I was gonna slice it, but things went awry. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we ended up doing pulled, so I pulled it and it is really tender, really juicy. And uh, I'll tell you the story in a minute. First, let's try it. Hmm. That smoky flavor. And look at that crust. Just a great bark on it. And it's just, I don't know if you can see that, but it is juicy, falling apart. Hmm. You literally don't need any barbecue sauce. Or anything. These are gonna make fan fucking tastic tacos. Sandwiches. You name it. Put it over eggs. Alright. Story time. So put the uh, meat on around noon. Around four o'clock, it stalled at 138 internal and sat there for like two and a half hours. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, it's not supposed to be stalling until about 160-ish, nothing. So finally, I'm like, sorry kids, I'm gonna have to make spaghetti, something else, this is not gonna be done. So I wrapped it at 138 in butcher paper. Two hours later, it gets to 160 and frickin' stalls at 160 wrapped in butcher paper. The Kamado is smoking like a champ. It's holding its temperature. 
225, 230, has been all day. So finally, I'm like, at like eight o'clock at night, it's been cooking now for over eight hours. I get it to 178 and that's it. Like it will not budge. So I went out and I wrapped it in foil over top of butcher paper, added a little bit more fuel to the Kamado and cranked it up. Guess what? Nothing. So here it is, 10, 10.30 at night, and I'm like, what is going on? So I finally go out, I change the temperature probe out, stick the new one in, it's at 205. My temp probe, like, died. So when I wrapped it, it pulled, the temp probe just pulled the wire out. So the wire's kind of in there and it's sitting at that same locked in temperature and it was probably done at 205 internal, probably at like dinner time, but no. So I was really worried because now by this time I'm exhausted, I'm tired and I'm like, you know what, screw it, I'm going to bed. So I took it off, put it in the cooler, woke up this morning, opened it up and here we go. So just goes to show, not everything goes according to plan. <laughs> And, you know, it's not supposed to stall at 138. Um, so anyway, turned out really great. I would have liked it to be a little more uh, pink in the middle, but it looks amazing, tastes amazing, and it didn't dry out, which is shocking because I'm guessing it was over 200 for four hours. So, and then just let it rest overnight. So. There you go. Not, not every. I was gonna, I was gonna just kind of try to fake it and not tell you guys, but I'm like, what? This stuff happens, and guess what? It's gonna be fine. So there you go. <laughs> Check your temperature probe. Make sure you didn't fuck it up. That's a moral of the story. Anyway, all right, guys. It's been cooking with AA Ron. I'll see you next time. Hopefully, we'll uh, we go a little smoother.